That's right. Apple is entering the AI game. It is going to be kind of like Game of Thrones, but AI being the Valerian steel or the dragons. So Apple finally, finally presented their new AI that Apple users will be able to use next autumn. And we don't know exactly when. And spoiler alert, their AI wasn't a cutting edge tech presentation or a shocking experience. At least I don't think for all the nerds that we've been interested in using AI for a while. In this video, I'm not going to go deep in all the iOS updates, changes or AI capabilities. I would like to share with you my thoughts about the latest Apple presentation and do it in my way. In three, nobody saw this coming, moments I had while I was watching it. An important day, some say is the best Apple presentation of the last 10 years or day zero of the next wave of how humans are going to use smartphones. And my overall opinion, I think that as always, they have chosen a pretty intelligent strategy. Thanks for watching. The first, nobody saw this coming. Apple seems to be adopting a new strategy, waiting and seeing what works and what not, and then create their own products and make the money. Apple is introducing on the next products all the AI use cases that we've been seeing for a while in other products like Gemini, GPTs, Claude, Microsoft Copilot, and AI wearables like the Rabbit One or the Humane Pin. And with it, it's making AI mainstream. AI for everybody. That has an iPhone 15 Pro or superior. I always had this idea of Apple being at the cutting edge of innovation, but they got older. Apple is adapting a more conservative approach, playing it safe. This event showed, one, how Apple seems to be on the back of the line of innovation, and two, how OpenAI is the leading force in AI. So what would be the most interesting movement for the company? If you can beat them, use them. They have allied with a third party like OpenAI, knowing that they are in the front line of innovation. But in the same time, they announced their own AI, called Apple Intelligence. AI. Second, nobody saw this coming. Not only because nobody has seen the name coming, even though it was in front of our eyes all the time but because it is an AI that serves Apple's purpose, personal technology and privacy, and protects them from the main downsides of this new technology. This intelligence is focused on building an AI across the Apple's ecosystem that understands you. It knows your calendar, your emails, your notes, the apps you're using, who you message often, your contacts, etc. To create a cohesive whole, it will be able to take actions on your behalf using natural language to use some of these apps similar to what Rabbit R1 and the human AI pin promised to do. Now just built into your phone. It's basically going to be your personal assistant. They're looking more for something personal that helps you instead of something that will replace you. And that's a good move. You are always in the center of this new technology. But it seems that this AI for now is not going to be as powerful as the other ones. Apple intelligence comes with a capability ceiling. Basically, there's like some stuff that it won't be able to do. That's when ChatGPT will come into action. Once the ceiling of capabilities will be reached, the system will ask you if you want to switch to ChatGPT and you will continue with the third-party app. This use of a third-party AI is a wise move for two reasons. A mature acceptance that they're behind the curve respecting AI models innovation and a clever way to stay out of potential litigations while protecting their brand reputation. Again, I think it's a very conservative and wise strategic movement. This ceiling of capabilities means if you want to use AI to make a copy of another book and sell it, supposedly, Apple Intelligence won't be able to assist you with that. At least, not directly. It seems like you won't be able to create hyperrealistic images to go and do deepfakes. Basically, any misuse of AI won't be possible with Apple's AI. You will never see a newspaper saying that because of Apple Intelligence, something bad happened. So their reputation is going to stay intact. Not like Google, for example. In the presentation, they insisted a lot in security. They know people are concerned about privacy and where their data is going. So basically, they made it a big point to focus on the fact that most of the AI is running on device. And if for whatever the reason is sending it to the cloud, it is going to let you know about it and it's going to encrypt it so even people that have access to the cloud aren't going to be able to read or access your information. They are starting to look more like a government, asking for our trust in their ability to protect us. The third, nobody saw this coming. Okay, let me rephrase this last point to why is nobody talking about this? So Apple showed the masses what AI can do and it is pretty cool. So for example, you will now see suggestions for your response based on the emails. The AI will find questions you were asked in the email and you will quickly choose your responses. 
Another thing is that now it's going to be easier and faster to browse your inbox. Instead of previewing the first few lines of each email, now you will see summaries of the email. You can tap and reveal a summary at the top of the email. Image 1 can transform a rough sketch into a polished image that complements your notes and makes them more visual. Cleanup tool will identify distracting objects in the background so you can erase them. Recordings, automatic transcriptions and Apple intelligence powered summaries are also coming to the phone app. And by the way, when you will start recording a call, know that the other participant is going to be notified. There is going to be AI generated custom emojis. And yes, you will be able to control and talk to this new AI with new Siri. And supposedly from your watch too. I am the first one that is very excited about all of these things. Look here, for example, my video on the Vision Pro. You know, new tech for entertainment, making our lives easier. But all of this feels like a distraction. Roman Coliseum style. Are you not entertained? That doesn't allow us to zoom out and see the big picture. Distract us from what exactly? Maybe they're not distracting us willingly. But a huge social structure change will happen at the same time, and we're not seeing it coming. Nations, security and services. Anytime that a big technology innovation has happened, there has been a huge change in social structures and the organizations of power. Let's focus on the highest social structure, our nations. Something or someone that gives us trust and offers us protection and services. A wide range of services from very different sectors and across large parts of the world have merged into one company. Google, for example, big tech companies offer tools for everything like watching TV shows, writing poems, or running billion-dollar businesses. The only organizations with similar deep impacts on people's lives are national governments. This is what's called Googleization. It would be a bunch of free or low-cost services that create unique entities, like Google, enabling massive sectors of the economy and human experiences to function. And as we have seen, besides offering diverse services, Apple's selling point is security and privacy of your digital data in the new digital world. Even though there is skepticism about the trustworthiness of large tech companies like Microsoft, Apple and Google in terms of data privacy. But there is the same skepticism about nations. Ask yourself this. Do you trust nations to give you security against violence? How did they manage COVID, for example? Do you trust your nation to provide you with a good end of your life when the population pyramid is inverted as a fact? Financial security when we are entering a potential depression that some say was caused by the same governments with inflation? When we see that our politicians are corrupted as a fact? Difficult. Add into the mix the mistrust of deep fakes and more stuff that will come in the future, and many democratic countries will face a steady decline in their institutional foundations, their legitimacy and authority. In history, who has controlled power, technology, has controlled the world. Unlike what happened with rockets, satellites and the internet, the cutting edge of this wave is in these companies, not in governments, organizations or academic labs. As Mustafa Suleiman says in his book The Coming Wave, it is a circular dynamic where technology spreads, power shifts and foundations are undermined, and the ability to stop these technologies decreases, causing them to spread even more. A few select companies or organizations will massively benefit from a new concentration of capacity. They will grow beyond the size and reach of many nation-states, like it happened in video games like Fallout. Given the range of concentrated capabilities that cutting-edge technology will bring them, this new generation of companies could take on roles usually handled by governments like education, defense, currency or law enforcement. AI represents a huge change, and these social entities are going to be affected by it, fragmenting the state from both the top and bottom. In the end, it will question the viability of some nations. So yes, Apple is entering the AI game, and behind all this shiny, cool, expensive stuff, Apple is playing another completely different kind of game. It is going to be kind of like the new Game of Thrones, but AI being the Valerian Steel or the Dragons. For the ones that are not familiarized with the players, maybe it would be cool to make a video with some parallelisms to one of the best TV shows ever made. Except the last season. Tell me in the comments if you want a video on that. Thank you so much for your time and stay kind.